Using your vertex form introduction little slip of paper, let me help you make some connections. Some connections between a equation that we have here, y equals the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 4, and what might appear to be something that we've seen before. Like, what if this equation was absolute value? Doesn't it kind of look similar? What do I mean look similar? Well, it's in a certain form. It's in a certain form where the number that's being added or subtracted with x, remember that number is actually like a shift number, uh, specifically a shift to the right. How about the number at the end of the equation? Wasn't that number like a shift number, like specifically shifting up? What we're saying here is that it looks like we can come up with the vertex of this quadratic equation. It looks like the vertex would be at 3, 4. Now, just the other day, we were talking about finding a vertex, uh, but we were finding the vertex when it was in standard form. So can we take this equation and can we kind of make it standard? Move over to the next column of your little slip of paper. Let's, let's kind of simplify this. Let's sort of multiply it out. Now, x minus 3 squared, you do have to remember that's the same as x minus 3 times x minus 3. And that requires something called, sometimes called the FOIL method or just the distributive property. But in either case, you end up with an expansion. Now the terms being x squared minus 6x plus 9. And of course, there's still that plus 4 at the end, which ends up simplifying this to be x squared minus 6x plus 13. Now that equation, and you can write that on the third line of your little slip of paper, that equation is in what we call standard form. Now standard form, it also has a vertex. Remember, the vertex is found by using a little formula, the opposite of b over 2a. For this particular problem, that's going to end up working out nicely to be 6 over 2, which we know is 3. Oh, wait a minute, 3. That looks like that's the same vertex. That's the same vertex as we found at the beginning. Remember, to get the y value, which you can use that other box on the right side, you can plug in 3, and you want to do that math carefully. That's going to be 9 minus 18 plus 13. That comes out to, oh my gosh, it comes out to be 4. It comes out to be the same. Well, it turns out that's because these two equations are just in different forms. You see, one of the forms is called vertex form. And vertex form is nice because it tells you right away that you shifted to the right 3 and you shifted up 4. Of course, that gives you the vertex at 3, 4. The other form, well, it's called standard form. And even though it's written differently, it's still the same equation. It's still the same equation, which would give us the same vertex, which ultimately is going to give us the same parabola. What we want to do today is we want to dig a little bit more deeply into how to work with an equation in vertex form. And perhaps we will even, uh, uh, as we did in this little intro, we will change it to standard form uh, in order to, to sort of see that we end up with the same answer. Let's go back to that uh, paper that I handed out the first day. And if you flip to the next page, you'll see that we, uh, will, uh, we have a chance to talk about vertex form. Now, vertex form is when an equation, a quadratic equation, is written in such a way that uh, we can see the number that's being added or subtracted with x, as well as the number that's being added or subtracted at the end. And just like we did before with absolute value, the number that's being added or subtracted with x, that's always going to give us the horizontal shift. And of course, that specific value, will it'll be the opposite value. Now, the number that's at the end of the equation, that's going to give us the vertical shift. The vertical shift, of course, of the vertex. Now, remember that will end up being the same value. So when an equation's in vertex form, it's very easy to grab the vertex. It's simply looking at the shift numbers. So what about 
an equation like negative 1 half x minus 3 squared plus 1. Now maybe the first thing you notice is the number that's being added or subtracted with x. And that's good, but I want to just back up a step and I want to remind you that um, it's this x squared or this square uh, that still is the most powerful. It, it's, of course, quadratic, and that's, that's what makes the uh, ultimate graph that we're going to draw a parabola. But, but you're right. Um, it is this number here uh, that probably grabs our attention pretty quickly um, because it tells us that the graph is going to shift to the right. It's going to shift to the right positive 3. And this number at the end, I mean, we see that number, and we know that that's going to shift the graph up. It's going to shift the graph up uh, by 1. So right away, we have our, uh, we have our vertex. Now remember, uh, the, the graph, the, the, the direction of the graph is still based on the a value, that is the number, uh, the coefficient. And this a value is less than 0. Uh, so we still have a parabola that's going to open down. So, are we ready to uh, sort of come up with a, a table of values? I mean, we're, we're almost ready to, to make an entire graph. Well, let, let's, let's slow down a second here. We, first of all, we, we still want to plug in 0, uh, and that means plugging 0 into my equation. Um, oh, it, it's, it's a little bit harder to plug in 0 because, well, because... You have to do uh, some more order of operations. You have to actually kind of simplify this a little bit. So, all right, I'm going to do what's in the parentheses first. That's, that's going to give me negative 3. Uh, okay, eventually I'm going to square that. Um, all right, if I square that, that's going to equal 9. And uh, now if I multiply that by negative 1 half, uh, I just get half or negative 1 half of, of 9. So. Uh, you kind of have to work out, you kind of have to work it out a little bit more when you plug in zero uh, because you don't get everything just to cancel out. Uh, you actually end up having to work out some of these values. All right, so when I plugged in zero, I got negative three. When I squared that, I got nine. And when you cut that in negative one half, you get negative four and a half, which eventually that comes out to negative 3.5. Well, that wasn't terrible, but that ends up being the, uh, the value that goes with, with 0. I want to pick some x values that are larger than the vertex. Uh, you know, remember, the vertex is at 3. Um, you know, I can put that in my table if I want. Maybe that makes it a little bit easier to see that uh, I need uh, some numbers that are bigger than 3. Uh, perhaps plugging in 4, per, perhaps plugging in 5. Let, let's plug in both of those. Those are numbers that are bigger than 3. Now, again, when you plug this in, you might notice you're kind of plugging into a different type of equation. It just means you have to work it out. It's not terrible. 4 minus 3 is just 1. Uh, 1 squared is, is still 1. So if you multiply that by negative 1 half... Um, Maybe I should put the parentheses here. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I end up with negative 1 half plus 1. Uh, that's actually going to come out to be a half. Okay, so I plugged in 4. I got a half. What happens when you plug in 5? When you plug in 5, you get 2. 2 squared is... 4, negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 actually comes out to be negative 1. All right, so I got myself a table. Now, it always takes a little bit of work to make a table of values, but remember, the vertex, we found that pretty quickly, and the vertex is still the most important point it's going to be the first point that I graph um, at 3, 1. We even get it kind of labeled uh, just to really give it some oomph. How about the y-intercept at 0, negative 3 halves? Uh, yeah, it's going to kind of be like halfway down here. Let's get it. There we go. 
Uh, how about four uh, and a half? Four and a half is going to be, let's change the color, it's going to be right there. And how about five negative one is right there. Now remember, uh, I kind of only see like, you know, sort of part of my parabola, but I know that my parabola is gonna open down. Uh, I've seen plenty of these U shapes before, so I kind of have a general idea of what the graph looks like. Of course, now that you've seen this a few times, uh, perhaps you're even ready to uh, think about your symmetry points before you even draw the graph. Remember, your symmetry points are just going to be uh, the same distance. They're going to be the same distance uh, from uh, that middle line. Uh, that means that I should end up with a symmetry point uh, that would be like, like what? Um, like at two and a, and a half? Uh, that, that's an easy symmetry point to put down. Um, again, I just went the same distance, but I did keep my height the same. And how about a symmetry point here? Um, shouldn't that be uh, at this position? Yeah, it's just a position that is over uh, two units, uh, but that actually puts me at the point uh, one, negative one. Now it's maybe a little bit easier to draw my parabola. Um, I have more points that I can actually connect uh, and uh, it looks good. Let's keep adding. Uh, that is adding some concepts to these graphs, uh, the domain. We've actually seen this kind of domain before. We know that the graph is gonna keep opening to the left and the right, even though it doesn't spread out that quickly. It does open up forever. So we can say all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. And if you think about your range, your range is everything below uh, that high point. Uh, that high point specifically would be the y value. Uh, that is everything that is below the number one. So we can say uh, negative infinity up to one um, to be less than one. Now, Rewriting this equation in standard form. Rewriting this equation in standard form is a matter of taking some time to work through the algebra of simplifying negative one half the quantity x minus three squared plus one. If you work through that algebra like we did in the intro, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need to kind of like foil the uh, x minus 3x minus 3. Now remember, when you FOIL that, you actually end up distributing an x to x, which gives you x squared, x to negative 3, which gives you negative 3x, negative 3 to x, which gives you another negative 3x, and finally, negative 3 to negative 3. Now when you distribute that, you want to very carefully record your x squared. Those negative 3x's become negative 6x, and then we get that plus 9. Then, then, my negative 1 half is going to distribute in here. That is, it's going to cut everything into negative 1 half. And so I'll have a negative 1 half x squared. I'll have a 3x, uh, but I'll have negative 4 and a half. Don't forget the plus 1 on the end, uh, because when you finally add that plus 1, you end up with negative 3.5. Now I feel like I've seen negative 3.5 before. Right, that, that's the y-intercept. That gives you a little bit of like a, a check uh, that your y-intercept is right. Um, even though we found it before, we can see that it's also part of this equation. Are you ready to try one? Okay, what you're trying to do is graph, there it is. 2 quantity x plus 5 squared minus 4. Another equation that's in standard form. And again, just like anytime you're watching one of these videos, uh, you do want to actually pause the video, try this on your own, but uh, you're welcome to uh, play and pause the video as I will certainly uh, present the answers as we, uh, as we work through each of these steps.
your vertex is pretty easy to find because you can just use the shifting concept. This graph shifts to the right. Remember, it's kind of like an opposite shift, and it shifts down. So all that was just based on the vertex form, that is the number that's with x and the number that's at the end. Your a value is positive, that is it's greater than zero, so this thing is going to open up. When you go to the table of values, you do have to kind of work out a little bit of this math. For example, I'm going to plug in zero. Okay, when you plug in zero, you get five squared. Five squared. It's five squared. That comes out to be 25. That's actually going to be two times 25 minus four, which is 50 minus four, which is 46. Now, wow, that, that's a huge number. Uh, no, that's not going to fit on our graph, but at least we have an idea that the graph is as high as 46. Remember, uh, you certainly can put the vertex in your table because you want to pick some numbers that are greater than your vertex. Does it make it a little bit easier to pick like negative 4, maybe like negative 3? You want to pick numbers that are greater than your vertex. So we plug in negative 4. Notice what happens when you plug in negative 4. You get kind of a nice little plug-in. You get negative 4 plus 5, which is 1 squared, which is still 1. Of course, it's going to be 2 times 1. 2 times 1 minus that n4 is just going to come out to be negative 2. So negative 2 is my y value that goes with negative 4. There it is. What happens when you plug in negative 3? What happens when you plug in this next point? You get negative 3 plus 5, which is 2, specifically 2 squared. That comes out to be 4. The 2 in the front times that 4 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. So we end up with 4 that goes with negative 3. All right, plot your vertex. Your vertex is at negative 5, negative 4. Make sure you get it in the right spot. You can even label it just for a little emphasis. What other points do we want to plot here? How about negative 4, negative 2? Negative 4, negative 2 right there. And negative 3, 4. Hold on a second here. I didn't graph this right, did I? All right. Hold on. Negative 5, negative 4 is, is over here. Negative 4, negative 2 is right there. And negative 3, 4, you might kind of wonder why it's so high up. Um, but uh, it makes sense because as we think about drawing our parabola, we know that uh, it's going to, we're only going to have half our shape. Uh, now it's time to think about those symmetry points. Now again, those symmetry points, they're just kind of like uh, the same distance from the middle. Uh, for example, I've got this point here that's uh, the same distance um, uh, from the middle, we, it appears that that would be at negative 6, negative 2. Notice that it's still the same y value. So negative 6, negative 2. And then we have another symmetry point that's just going to be one more notch over. Uh, again, when I say over, I'm referring to uh, from the middle. Um, What's, what's going on here? Oh, I'm, my, my points are too big. And so um, as far as trying to identify the middle, it's getting a little 
little sloppy, so. Okay. So, again, this point, this last one right here, it's the same distance from the middle uh, that is uh, that, th that this point was. It's, it's a distance of two. So I just kind of move two more units over in the other direction. Two units over in the other direction is going to put us at the value of this point, which should be at uh, negative uh, seven, right? Negative seven, and then up there at four. Right, so we can call that the other symmetry point. All right, so don't forget to finish drawing your parabola now that we have all, all these points uh, to connect. Looks like we're kind of adding domain and range uh, to this. That's just kind of want to add a little bit more. The domain is always all real numbers. That's kind of a freebie. Your range, you should feel like the graph is going up from this low point or specifically from this y value. And so the graph is going up from the number four. You can write that as four to infinity um, using the interval notation. And then everybody's favorite thing to do uh, which is turning the equation into standard form. Yes, I want you to start to uh, practice this. Uh, once you do it a few times, you realize that you're kind of just doing the FOIL method and then a little bit of uh, simplifying. Uh, but indeed, you want to do x plus 5 squared correctly by doing x plus 5, x plus 5. Uh, remember that that's the same as x squared plus 5x plus another 5x plus 25 which ends up ultimately being x squared plus 10x plus 25. If you distribute the 2, which you do need to do, you distribute the 2, everything gets doubled. You get 20x, uh, you get 50, and ultimately 50 minus 4 is going to come out to be 46. And again, do I feel like I've seen 46 before? I have. Uh, that's your y-intercept, which is really just a good little check that, that uh, everything is right. So we call this vertex form. Now, there's some homework problems that are actually on, your, uh, on this sheet, so uh, go ahead and see if you can graph those problems using the same method.